What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers. Uh, we're going to continue talking recruiting. There's a cornerback coming in on the June 2nd visit list who I love, plus three defensive line prospects, a position of major need for Wisconsin this cycle. We're going to break it all down with Brian Smith and give you the latest on this June 2nd weekend on Wisconsin. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, your team every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I want to say thank you to everybody who's tuning in. And without further ado, let's get Brian Smith on, Locked On's recruiting insider and somebody who... Brian, I, I got to tell you, I've told you this before. Tremendous feedback from your time on the show. People appreciate the the real takes from Brian Smith. <laughs> I'm not much for beating around the bush. I uh, I let it rip, man. Uh, if you don't win in recruiting, you're not going to win on the field. That's it right there. Um, I want to start here. So for a couple shows now, we've been talking about uh, on, on our side, the, the big recruiting weekend coming up. A couple more prospects I want to talk to you about. I want to start here, uh, big-time defensive line prospect, Benedict Ume, out of Old Avon Farms in Connecticut, 6'5", 260 pounds, uh, per the 247 composite, a four-star player, a great offer list. We talked about this a little before the show, Penn State, Auburn, Michigan, Duke, Stanford. What did you like about uh, Benedict's film when you were able to watch him on film? The length is ridiculous. He fits the profile of a strong side defensive end that's probably going to grow into a three-tech, at least in part, with time. And what I mean by that is he's a swing player. He's just growing into his body now. He's 260, give or take, and he's not big enough to take on offensive guards. Don't get me wrong, but on third and six, you can put him on the inside right now. He's a swing player. He could all play, also play defensive end in a 3-3-5, a 4-3. He can be a guy that moves inside and plays the one tech on a third and long. Those guys are invaluable, man. And that that speaks to his visit list. That speaks to the schools that offered him. He had all the big names up north and several down south. There's a reason he's a prospect that's probably going to end up being a top 100 guy by most of the services. That's the first thing I wrote down when I was watching the film is versatility. You spoke to it, playing a 3-3-5, a 4-3. He seems like a guy who... And I think these terms get thrown around a little much, and yet I'm about to do one. The high upside, high floor guys. He seems like a guy who has a really high floor. You already see the body developing. You see the length. You see the versatility. The motor, when you watch the film, he's he's running plays down off the backside. He seems like a guy who's a really good fit for just about any defense at the D1 level. Yeah, you said it. When you have a kid that can play with a high motor and has been, you know, placed with the God-given abilities that he does. Like his arms probably don't match, match 6'5". It's more like 6'8". I mean, his arms are long. If you have that kind of versatility, man, Penn State, Wisconsin, everybody's going to come after you, and that's what's happened. And here's the big bonus. This kid isn't a finished product. Like technically, once he gets to the college level, you're, there's always something you can learn. I'm, I'm fully aware. But Ben McDuma, he's a kid that has a long way to go. And he's already good. So you're going to have a chance to teach him into your scheme, whoever the school is that signs this young man. And maybe he could even be a guy that grows into a top 10 pick. Like the the frame fits that. If you look at the guys that get drafted in the first 15 picks that are D linemen, there's a lot of 6'3 to 6'6 guys. And he's right in the midst midst of that. So love the upside for Benning Uma. And talk about like offer lists. We've on previous shows we've talked about um, when a certain school offer uh, when Ohio State goes after a receiver or when Georgia goes after. We talked about Marion Stewart, right? When Georgia goes after a receiver, uh, you're looking at the offer list: Michigan, Penn State, Auburn. I mean, at some point, those type of schools they go after dudes. Yeah, it's if you're not losing battles to Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State in recruiting, that means you're not recruiting the right guys. And I know nobody likes to lose battles, but you're not going to win all of those. Mm. Um, back when I started first watching recruiting and kind of started following it in the early 90s, there were about five to eight schools that really dominated because they would recruit a little more nationally and do different things. And then there was like AM that didn't have to go very far because, you know, they're in Texas. But like 
they went after guys and they beat the crap out of each other. And the final three were often like Michigan, Miami, and Notre Dame. Well, they also finished in the top five a lot of those years. You have to get the elite kids. That never changes. In Wisconsin, now with this new staff, they've changed their challenge level. They're not just settling for the low-hanging fruit sometimes. And that's especially important. Like I say this every time I'm on your show, they got to get better on the outside the number positions, corner and receiver. You're not going to get the kid that you beat out from Central Michigan then go beat Ohio State. The only thing that matters is can they beat Ohio State? They're not going to win a national title until they can. So you, you got to get guys outside the numbers. And this is like Benedict Uma is one of those guys. He's a pass rusher that helps the corners and whatnot. That's just a great example of it. What's the ceiling for a program if you don't have NFL dudes on the D-line? Eight and four. I mean, like, unless like the Big Ten West isn't the greatest. So Wisconsin's had years that were better than that record-wise. But like, what would Wisconsin have been in the SEC West with some of those rosters? Five and seven to seven and five. Mm-hmm. Because they wouldn't have been able to slow down the offenses with all those quarterbacks that have suddenly started to come through the SEC. D-line, man, that never changes. You need a gazillion of them because offenses run the fast pace. They spread you out. They make these guys run. They do it because certain schools don't get enough of them. Like Texas Tech's never getting the kid that a and wants, as an example. Penn State gets the kid that Temple would love to have that never gets, that kind of thing. So you need droves of them because they get tired. And historically, the D linemen go to certain schools, but that's changed. And Wisconsin's starting to get more of those kids. Now you're looking at a situation where somebody from Florida, for example, where I live, 10 years ago, if you'd have told me that Wisconsin was going to get a kid that like UF wanted, I'd have laughed in your face. Now it's not out of the question. Recruiting's changed. Kids look at it differently, which helps Wisconsin immensely. So they can get kids like Benedict Uma. They can get kids that are in Georgia. They could get a Texas kid, and they can really circumvent that roster much faster than I would have thought, even five years ago, really. Mm-hmm. What We talked about on Marion Stewart, you and I, and we talked about how big of a get he would be as a program-changing type talent for Wisconsin. What What is the bigger get here, assuming that Wisconsin can get either one of these blue-chip prospects? I'm Marion both coming this weekend for a visit. I'm Marion Stewart or Benedict Uma. I would say Stewart just because they've done better getting D linemen historically than they have receivers. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's six one way, half dozen the other. What are your needs? Impact players, both, yes. But what are your needs? Wisconsin needs playmakers that make the other team look bad in space. They struggle to get them. I'm going with the wide receiver every time. Yeah, that's a good take. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Coming up, a couple more defense alignment coming up this weekend. We talked ad nauseum about how big of a position of need that is for Wisconsin in this recruiting cycle. We're going to talk about Dominic Nichols and Hank Weber, both coming up after the break with Brian Smith. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. Uh, FanDuel is our go-to sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. And it's a great time now with the NBA playoffs on. Take a fast break over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and you get your no sweat first bet up to two twenty five hundred dollars back in bonus bets. That's $2,500 if your bets don't hit in bonus bets over at FanDuel.com. I love the app. <clears throat> Safe, secure, incredibly easy to use. Get it set up and running almost immediately. And instant payouts. There's so many other sites out there that you have to jump through hoops. Even if even if you hit that five-team parlay, that four-team parlay, that three-team parlay, then you have to figure out how to get paid. It's nauseating. FanDuel takes care of that. Instant payouts, easy to use, safe and secure, plus a great New bonus feature for our Locked On listeners. $2,500 in bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. All right, we're going to get uh, Brian Smith back on and continue talking about a big-time recruiting weekend coming up. Brian, I want to give you an opportunity. Where can people follow uh, along with what you're doing? You're always active, especially this time of the year. <laughs> yeah, the month of June coming up is the biggest month of the year for recruiting, no question. And at FB Scout underscore Florida – you can find me on YouTube. I do prospect profiles. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, photos and video reels and whatnot. And then I'm most active on Twitter. The same kind of things. I do a lot of different stuff talking about kids all throughout the state of Florida in particular because I live down here. But it's just recruiting in general. If you like recruiting, I got something for you. I love it, man. All right. Let's, and speaking of that, let's continue talking recruiting. 
Uh, again, more Absolutely. prospects coming up this June 2nd weekend, a monster weekend for Luke Fickle and the Badgers. Uh, Dominic Nichols is coming, a four-star edge, according to the 247 composite. Big frame, 6'5", 240, good motor, coming out of Maryland. Big Another kid, we talked about uh, Benedict Uma. This is another one with a big-time offer list, Michigan, Penn State, and others in on um, Dominic Nichols. What did you see when you turned on the film, film of Nichols? Uh, raw, needs needs work on technical stuff but has the length that you're looking for. He's a slightly smaller version of Uma. Uh, they're looking for guys that can set the edge and change the direction of what their defense does. Historically, Wisconsin obviously has run a traditional 3-4 here recently and is very successful at it, I might add. But this group, I think they're going to be a little more multiple, and they need guys that can play inside and out and set the edge with length. It's more of a traditional pro style four three kind of look that I would think Dominic would play in, but he could grow into a D tackle. Don't discount that. Historically, you're going to gain at least 20 pounds in college, and a lot of these guys gain more. They're guys like they gain 50 and 60 pounds. Justin Tuck was 215 when he enrolled at Notre Dame. He played like 275 with the Giants. You know, certain guys just gain more weight. This kid's it's going to sound goofy, but he's not the thickest kid, and he's 245. He's got mm -hmm. the frame to weigh 280. Maybe he plays inside for the Badgers. And if you can get those guys with the length, teams are looking to knock down passes with a quick passing game. He fits that as well. Fickle has done a tremendous job historically with recruiting defensive linemen and finding the right fit or fits as it may be with them. This is a kid that fits that. He, he needs to be coached up. Fickle has done that forever. It's not a newsflash. Nichols kind of fits the profile. Yeah, it's interesting when you when you watch Benedict Duma's film and then Nichols film back to back, um, there are similarities. But to your point, you can see how Nichols is a, a, a smaller version of him. Right. And one of the things I saw on Nichols film, and I definitely want your take on this, is I don't know where he plays at the next level. And you just hit on it. He could be a tackle. He could be on the edge. He's playing a lot standing up. He doesn't really have his hand in the dirt. Is it possible um, this is a guy that. I don't want to say may struggle to find a position, but may take a couple of years to find that spot. The technique is part of that because certain guys just would rather go through someone and certain guys want to use hands and go right or left. It's a personality trait that you're kind of innate with. Whatever that is for him will kind of dictate that, whether it's inside or out. But if you're an edge guy, you got to be able to speed rush, even if you're on the strong side. So how he develops is up to him and how much weight they want to put on him. But I think they're going to want to see him in one-on-ones against Wisconsin players. If he goes to University of Wisconsin, their linemen are good, obviously, on the offensive line, have been forever. If they can do well with teaching him some basic stuff with his frame and he can play edge and three-tech, that's the best thing that can happen you want versatility so on third and eight he doesn't have to run off the field real quick you want as many guys that can play all three downs but maybe he moves inside part of the time you run just a 6'4 235 guy out there that's a speed rusher and he can stay on the field as a pass rusher that moves inside i don't really look at it as one spot it used to be that way but not in today's world you might you might see fickle run several versions of the 335 and a 4-3 kind of what moving the guys around because it confuses offenses. They got to do things to offset what these teams do with the spread. So Nichols can do that for you. He can help you play multiple positions. And at some level, is it is it just finding a bunch of athletes, throwing them in there and seeing who sticks? A defensive line, you got to have speed today and, and any defensive look. But if you don't have the raw talent up front, my point earlier about beating Ohio State is the only goal that, in my opinion, with every recruit, that's your only goal. That's it. I mean, they, they completely run roughshod over the Big Ten for the most part because they have more talent. You have to get guys that look like the kids that Ohio State's getting. That's what this is. They're, they may not get the kid that's already rated the four-star, but they might have the kid with as much upside. And that's where the coaching staff at the University of Wisconsin comes in, and then you just coach them up, redshirt, etc. I think that they're going to throw some things at the wall. And there's no doubt that Nichols has got some boomer bust to him, mm. but the tools are there. I mean, with their coaching staff, I'm less worried about the bust. You know what I mean? Like you have to trust what Luke Fickle has done prior when he was at Ohio State as an assistant and Cincinnati as the head coach. I, I think they'll be fine. 
And I want to take that in transit. Well, actually, let me go stop here. I want one more question because I, th- I found this similarity between Uma and Nichols. I think both have, just from the film, just watching, have a great motor. They're tracking plays 15, 20 yards on the field. They're still sprinting. They're running sideline to sideline. When you're watching prospects, especially linemen on film, and you see that type of motor, how much of a skill is motor? And is that something you can evaluate from film? Well, yeah, I mean, the kids that are lazy, and there are plenty of them. Trust me, I see plenty of that. That's going to hurt them. Even if you're 6'4", 305, and you can run, coaches get a little concerned sometimes and are less likely to really go after you when they watch. They get A lot of times they'll get game coach or game tape from the coaches at the high school that I don't see because that's the only thing they're really looking for. Certain guys just walk in the room. And these coaches, like, they're not technically supposed to, but everybody meets the players at the school. You know, you always shake their hand. You can tell when a kid's got God-given ability, obviously. But now how much effort does he have? That's that's a want to. Mm-hmm. Effort is something that is – the coaches, like uh, Saban talks about it. You're here. You are who you are. But now how much effort do you put into it? He talks about that constantly. And so do a lot of other guys. That's something that Wisconsin and I think Fickle will not tolerate. You don't play hard for him, he'll get rid of your butt. You'll be gone. So I think it's something they look at really hard, and you're not going to play for him that way. And it's probably one of the reasons that Nichols is on their list. He fits the profile. Yeah, and you can see that on film. He's playing special teams. He's blocking punts. He's he's all over the field. I heard a coach say this one time, and I thought this was really insightful. He said, listen, when I get a player, I can either coach their effort or their technique. I can't do both. So if the player comes with the effort, it allows the coach to focus on the other things. Um, That's right. I want to switch gears here. Let's talk Hank Weber, another defensive line coming, a defensive lineman coming this weekend. Different than Uma, different than Nichols. He's a, doesn't quite have that frame. He's a little smaller. I mean, thickly built, but not the big frame. He, I think he's going to be a defensive end, strong side defensive end. Curious what you saw with uh, Weber when you turned on that film. I agree. Probably a five tech effort kid can play with leverage. I don't think his upside is like on Uma's level, but that, you know, Uma could be the number eight pick in the draft and it wouldn't shock me. He, he's just got extremely excellent technique to work on. Um, I would say Weber is more of a traditional Wisconsin recruit. Mm-hmm. This is a kid they've always taken and they're like, eh, it's just a guy. And then three years later, he's second team all big 10. Why? Cause Wisconsin can coach. Uh, that's not going to change under Luke Fickle's staff, especially on defense. I would say that there's a really good chance this is a kid that will fit in. His college list, he's got Vanderbilt on it in North Carolina, two really good schools, so it falls in line with Wisconsin. He's also at Brentwood Academy, which is a tremendous academic institution down in the Nashville area. This is about as fit as it gets with Wisconsin. I wouldn't be shocked if they got him to commit at some point because it's the happy medium for him. Big Ten football, great school, uh, this this is what Wisconsin's made a living off of. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what you said there. Kind of a traditional Wisconsin type defensive lineman. I think he has a – you can definitely see why he's a star or a tier below the other two in a recruiting pedigree standpoint because he doesn't have the frame to have that giant upside. He doesn't have an explosive twitch. But I actually think he's pretty quick off the line for a size. Like I think he can be a little bit more than a plugger. Um, so I'm excited about Weber. But I agree with you. He doesn't – I don't think he carries the upside that the other two prospects have. That's pretty much where I fall in line. Good players like this, though, you got to take them. Mm-hmm. Especially on the defensive line. You you just talked about it. You need a gazillion of them. And oh, yeah, you do. This is a guy you can plug and play. I think in a year or two, I think he would be a pretty steady contributor. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a quick break, continue this great conversation going. As always with Brian Smith, we run out of time before questions. Uh, I have a cornerback I want to ask him about whose film I actually really liked kind of in his backyard. We're going to talk about that next. Another guy coming up on that June 2nd visit, but first a quick break for our friends of the show. And also an opportunity to say thank you for tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. I appreciate all of y'all so, so much for giving us the opportunity to get into your day a little bit, whether it's in the commute, whether you're mowing the lawn, whatever you're doing. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I very much appreciate it. All right, Brian, let, let's get back into this conversation. I wanted to ask your opinion on a cornerback visiting this weekend, Vernon Woodward. Like every defensive back seemingly Luke Fickle offers, he is six foot, six foot one. Um, he's listed at six two. He's probably more like six one, uh, 180 pounds, long frame out of Winter Park, Florida. What what can you tell us about uh, Woodward's game? Well, let's start with where he's from. Winter Park is right in the middle of Orlando. 
They play a real schedule. It's a city within a city. They've always got some talent, and they'll always play programs like Dr. Phillips or Apopka or whatever. They're not afraid of competition, and this kid's grown up around it. The greater uh, Orlando area, to be quite honest with you, is loaded. So he's a kid that's going to be able to come in and play a little earlier. Don't be taken with his ranking. I Florida kids in rankings need, need to be taken with a grain of salt. They come in hungry and they're ready to play. Uh, the other thing with him, as you mentioned, the length, 6'1 plus, man, never have enough of those guys, brother. You never have enough of those guys. And Pickles always run a defense based on size at corner. He's done a great job coaching guys up that came in, honestly, with less, less acclaim. So Sauce Gardner being one of them. He, he wasn't even recruited by Michigan or Michigan State. He's from Detroit. So I, I'm pretty high on him. I just think that it's going to take a little bit to get the technique down. But the frame is exactly the kind of thing that Luke, Fick, Luke Fickle wants. Well, and you mentioned, you know, one of the things I think is really insightful that you brought up is you have to – Wisconsin and really all Big Ten teams outside of Michigan probably needs to focus on closing the gap with Ohio State, right? And you do that with That's plus true. size at corner. You can't close that gap with 5'10 corners. Uh, if you if you want to go 8-4, and four, you can sign a bunch of them. You'll get smoked by Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, it's that's the one spot there is no hiding. There is no helping. We you can only coach so much. You, you got to have just raw talent at corner more than any other spot. Yeah, no, you're out there by yourself, man. There's no yeah. helping. You, you <laughs> are it. on the island for sure, for 100%. better and worse. Um, yeah. I wouldn't. The last thing with Woodward's film that I I also found really intriguing is he will come up and pop people. Like he really, for a cornerback, plays pretty physical. That's a Florida kid, and that's why I said the ranking, eh, you know what I mean? Like, could he play free safety for you possibly? Sure. You know what I mean? Most Florida kids are not afraid of contact. Most of them are overly aggressive. So, like, especially if you're going to recruit defensive kids, come down here to my state. Uh, like 75% of the prospects project on the defensive side of the ball. And there are years that it's over 80%. It's that, that, that's just the mentality here. It's very aggressive. So he fits that, and he might even be a guy that could play some nickel and, you know, going up against a big slot. Like, that's the new thing, put a big slot there to try to put a team in an awkward spot. Do we take a linebacker off the field because we don't want a linebacker on this guy? Then you run the ball more. Like, there's the X's and O's and the chess pieces. So if you've got big corners to the reason that Luke Fickle, I think, sticks with this philosophy, it helps you against the run just as much as it does the pass. Again, this young man fits that profile very, very well. That's well said. We are excited for this weekend, Brian. And next week, well, I'm sure we'll have you back on. Hopefully, there's a couple of commits to talk about. Possibly. He is. <laughs> I think there will be. I hope so. He is Brian Smith, uh, Lockdowns Recruiting Insider. As always, my friend, we are thankful that you are here, and we are smarter because of your insight. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Take care. On Wisconsin, and we'll talk to everybody later.